John Stossel, who is a well-known journalist in the U.S., attacks electric vehicles and spreads misinformation. In this video, which was viewed over a million times. Now my president says the future is electric and there's no turning back. To make sure of that, some states are banning gas-powered cars. Gasoline cars are driving us toward climate chaos. We actually have to stop using fossil fuel vehicles. California's governor made that an executive order. We will eliminate the sales of internal combustion engines. Governments everywhere say they plan to do that. The government has a vision for a future where all our cars will be electric. There is no need to ban gasoline vehicles because when you look at the long-term ownership cost of EVs, actually already you save money, which is why police departments are choosing EVs now. The rights law predicted that the battery costs would keep going down, and they certainly did, and as they keep going down, EVs are going to be even cheaper. But this is just magical thinking. It can't happen. Physicists like Mark Mills of the Manhattan Institute do understand. He says the trend to electric is a good thing. But it won't change the future in any significant way with respect to oil use or carbon dioxide emissions. That's inconvenient fact one. More electric cars will hardly dent oil use. If all of us bought electric cars, would it make any difference? So the world has 15, 18 million electric vehicles now. It could go to 300 million, maybe 500 million vehicles. I don't think it'll get that many, but that's the aspiration. That would reduce world oil consumption by about 10%. That's not nothing, but it doesn't end the use of oil for the world. Wait, what? He's only saying 300 to 500 million vehicles? How many vehicles are there in the world total? Well. There are 1.446 billion vehicles on Earth. John literally asked this guy, what happens if all of us buy electric vehicles, not if some of us buy electric vehicles? I mean, he clearly did not mean just the US because he said 500 million. US has less than 500 million vehicles, so he clearly meant the whole world. So. Why would you answer like that? If we oversimplify this math, and if only, let's say, by replacing 500 million cars, we reduce oil consumption by 10%, if we now replace three times more that, that means we reduce oil consumption by 30%. That is a significant number. But when someone answers a question like that, I'm going to double check facts. Would it really only be 30% of oil replaced if we go electric, the passenger vehicles? Well, if I look at government website from the US, right now, motor gasoline accounts for 44% of all consumption, which is basically passenger vehicles and pickup trucks. Interestingly, jet fuel and aviation is only a tiny fraction of what all passenger cars consume. When I dig a little bit deeper, this actually turns out to be diesel and also heating oil. So in the US, this would be basically heavier trucks and all kinds of heavier machinery. But clearly vehicles that we use for transportation in the US would account for more than 30% of all of uh, oil consumption. That would reduce world oil consumption by about 10%. That's not nothing, but it doesn't end the use of oil for the world. Because most of it's used for what? Flying airplanes, driving buses, big trucks, the mining equipment to get the copper to build the electric cars is all oil fired. And it won't change because those trucks last 40 years. When he says most, he really means a little bit more than half when you include all of this, which also includes agriculture. But to me, that message sounds like, oh, uh, let's ignore the single biggest sector that consumes the most oil, which is passenger vehicles, light pickup trucks, that people use for transportation. Let's ignore all of that because we can get to the other half right now immediately. And even with that other half, actually, we can get to a lot of it already.
For example, this government report from U.S. Department of Transportation says that almost half of all ton miles shipped by truck are at a distance under 500 miles. And you could actually include buses in this same category as well, but this Tesla Semi can go 500 miles without charging fully loaded. And that includes hills as well, but it can also recharge. So the hills or mountains don't really impact the range at all, for the most part. And it can go more than 500 miles, you just need to charge it. And you can charge 70% of a battery in 30 minutes with battery technology improving quickly in the end, eventually, we will be able to have electric semis that will be able to match long-haul diesel trucks that, you know, you can fill them up in 10 to 15 minutes. I would again point you to the Wright's Law, which predicted EV charging rates and the decline of battery costs. It will take some time, but eventually we will get there. And even if all vehicles somehow switch to electricity, there'd be another problem because despite what we've heard. Further, faster, cheaper, and greener. Electric cars are not all that green. One reason is because electricity isn't all that green. I'm amazed talking to people who are all excited about their electric car and they say, and I'm not polluting. <laughs> and I say, where do you get the electricity from? And they don't know. They don't know that most of America's electricity comes from fossil fuels, natural gas, and coal. Just 12% comes from wind and solar. Yet auto companies tell us... Electric vehicles in general are better and more sustainable for the environment. She's a Ford engineer. She's not ignorant. Well, actually, she probably is ignorant in the literal sense of the word. She's not stupid, but ignorance speaks to what you know. You have to mine somewhere on Earth 500,000 pounds of minerals and rock to make one battery. And most of this mining isn't done in the U.S. American regulations make it nearly impossible. So it's done other places, polluting those countries. And worse, ingredients in batteries are mined in places that enslave people and use child labor. An army of children are at the heart of the mining production, wearing no shoes and in the most wretched conditions. Most Americans proudly driving electric cars don't know about this. They just don't want mining done near them. But wherever it's done, mining is a dirty business that adds lots of carbon to the air. If you're worried about carbon dioxide, the electric vehicle is emitted 10 to 20 tons of carbon dioxide before it even gets to your driveway, before you drive the first mile and plug it in the first time. Carbon dioxide produced by the mining and the manufacturing and the shipping. Exactly. Volkswagen published an honest study. They point out that the first 60,000 miles or so you're driving an electric vehicle, that electric vehicle will have emitted more carbon dioxide than if you just drove a conventional vehicle in the first place. You have to own it for a while before the electric part starts to win. You have to own it for at least 100,000 miles. And then the electric part wins by some. So it doesn't get you a zero emissions vehicle. It's reduced the emissions then by 20 or 30 percent, which is not nothing, but it's not zero. OK, I'm not even going to mention that he said 60,000 miles and then he switched to 100,000 miles. Maybe the editor just did a very bad job. I don't know. But Volkswagen study. Oh, OK. <laughs> Here is a Model Y, a Tesla EV. As you can see, it has a frunk because it has no engine. It just has electric motors that power the car, which are much smaller than regular gas-powered engines. So you would think that all electric vehicles would have a frunk, right? No. Volkswagen ID4 does not have a frunk. I don't know what it has in here, but certainly not a frunk. And Volkswagen only makes money basically by selling gasoline-powered vehicles. And the CEO was fired. We know, because he pushed EVs too hard. There were, of course, other issues, but... 
Herbert was pushing EVs a little bit too much. If we use an EV from a company that actually knows how to make EVs, Tesla, we take, let's say, a Model 3. If we charge it in China, where electricity is made from coal, we will still reduce our life cycle emissions by about half. That is because when you have an internal combustion engine in a vehicle, a small engine, that engine will not be able to use a lot of the energy from the gasoline, maybe only 20% if you are lucky. In the meantime, if you have an electric vehicle, you will be able to put most of that energy down to the wheels. So even though you get electricity from a dirty source, coal, because that big coal plant is so big and relatively efficient when we compare it to an internal combustion engine that is stuck in a car, that is why the end result is actually better. And we are now seeing reports that solar energy is the cheapest energy source in some parts of the world. And also, solar energy is improving. The cost of solar energy has been dropping consistently and it should continue to keep falling. And as that happens, electricity will get cheaper and it will be all from a clean source. Then the cobalt question. Tesla cannot produce EVs without cobalt, right? Wrong. Half of all of the vehicles that Tesla produces already do not have any cobalt in them. Interestingly, these batteries are also cheaper, they last longer, although they do offer a little bit less range. Also, John, let's not forget all of the damage that the oil industry produces as well. I mean, there have been so many oil spills and the environment gets ruined as well. The bad part about oil is once you use it, you cannot recycle it with batteries, even if you use cobalt. Once you use it, you can recycle it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And this is the Tesla stock buying opportunity explained by Elon Musk. My name is Matt Postis. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.